Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor training in ophthalmology in London and graduated from Cambridge University two years ago. And on the side, I put out some medical education content onto YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. So go follow me on there. Links to all the socials are in the video description. So a couple of weeks ago, I put out a video on the retrospective approach to preparing for medical school OSCEs. And since then, I've had loads and loads of requests to make a similar video on history taking. Okay, so I'm joking. Actually, only one person asked for this video, but hopefully a few of you find it useful. In this video, we'll look at the four parts that make up a good history. We'll put this all into one neat structure that you can follow. And then we'll look at how you can present your history findings in a clear and concise manner. As usual, everything will be timestamped below in the description and the pinned comments, so feel free to jump to any particular part. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so when you're taking history, whether it's from a patient on the ward or whether it's an actor in your exam, I think you can break down the whole process into four key parts. Number one, information gathering. And what I mean by that is getting all the relevant clinical information. So your presented complaint, your history of presented complaint, and all your background, so your past medical history, etc. Number two, the patient's perspective. So this is our ICE. What are the patient's ideas, concerns, and expectations? Number three, trying to provide a clear structure to your history while including all the relevant things like starting with an open question and then moving on to more closed questioning, screening for other symptoms, signposting, gathering your ice, so your ideas, concerns, expectations, picking up on any cues from the patient, summarizing, as well as your systems review. And number four, being able to take this eight minute history and condense it into one minute where you can present it to your examiner or to your consultant and working out what's relevant and what's not relevant. So now let's try and put all of these four things together. Okay, so during med school, I was taught to take history using the Calgary-Cambridge model. I think a lot of medical schools use it, and I think it's a very nice, easy to work with method of getting all the information in a clear, concise manner. And I think there are lots of variants and they all do the same job. So the brief outside your history station will be something like this. You're the final year medical student on the ward and you've been asked to take a history from Mr. Jones, who has come in with some chest pain. You've got seven minutes to take the history and then you'll be asked to present your history to your examiner. So let's have a walk through the structure to taking a medical history and we'll base it loosely around this chest pain history. So we want to start with step one, which is initiate the session and build rapport. So we start off by introducing ourselves and confirming we have the correct patient. So, hi there, my name is Aaron Kiru. I'm one of the final year medical students. Is it Mr. Jones? I understand you've come in with some chest pain. I've asked for some pain relief, it's on its way. Offering painkillers is just a nice way to start building that rapport with your patient. Step two, screening for symptoms. So the aim here is to work out what are the key problems that this patient is presenting with. And there's usually two or three. So here we already know one of them is chest pain. Before we dive into chest pain, we just want to be aware, is there anything else? So I know you've mentioned some chest pain. Apart from the chest pain, is there anything else that's brought you in? Okay, that's great. There's chest pain and fever. Anything else? Okay, now on to step three, gathering information. By this point, we've identified the one or two key problems that this patient has presented with, and we want to tackle these individually. And the way we do this is we start with an open-ended question. So something like, tell me a bit more about the chest pain. Once you've asked that, it's really key to just let the patient speak and let them give you as much of the information as possible then you can go on to more closed and focused questions. And there's various mnemonics that are really helpful for these closed and focused questions. So for example, Socrates is used for any type of pain, whether it's chest pain, tummy pain, or headache. S for sight, so where is the pain? Onset, so did the pain come on gradually or suddenly? C for character, so is it a dull pain, a sharp pain, a burning pain? R for radiation, so does the pain move anywhere? A for any associated features. T for time, so how long does the pain last for? E for exacerbating and relieving factors. So does anything make the pain worse? Does anything make the pain better? And finally, S for severity. And usually we scale this, so on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the worst pain, how would you rate this pain? And then we use exactly the same approach for any of the other symptoms that we found from our screening. So an open question, and then more onto closed focus questions. Now onto step four, which is summarize. By this point, you've covered most of the patient's positive symptoms in detail, and now you want to summarize back to them. So this is where you're checking that you've understood them correctly. And you want to show your examiner you're summarizing, so literally use the word summarize. So just to summarize what we've covered so far, you've had two days of sharp central chest pain, six out of 10, that comes on when you take a big breath in, and it seems to get worse when you're lying down and a little bit better when you're sitting forward. Have I missed anything? So now onto step five, which is risk factors. This part of the history is a little bit unconventional, but I've decided to put it in as I kept missing out these really key parts to taking a good history. 
And my two supervisors at medical school, Laksh and Ria, who were literally the best at history taking, taught me everything, both advised me, have a separate section for this if you keep missing it out. It's a very focused way to help you narrow down your differential. So for example, in this cardiac history, there are four common themes of risk factors that I'd like to ask. So you could say, Thanks for sharing that with me. I've got some very specific questions now to help me work out what might be causing all of this. So vascular risk factor questions would be, do you have high blood pressure? Are you diabetic? Do you smoke? The MI symptom questions would be, do you have any nausea? Do you have any sweating? Do you ever feel short of breath? Do you ever feel your heart racing? The VTE risk factor questions would be, any calf swelling or calf pain? Any recent travel or being on a long haul flight? Do you take the oral contraceptive pill? and any previous clots in the leg. And finally, the infective endocarditis question is any recent dental work. I think from an examiner's point of view, even though that's a lot of questions in a short amount of time, I think they know exactly what you're trying to do in terms of trying to narrow down your differential. Now onto step six, systems review. And this involves a body system based screen for any symptoms that your patient may not have mentioned in your initial screen right at the start. It's different from the risk factor section, which is much more focused questions to help narrow down your differential. So in this particular chest pain history, you want to ask all the cardio system review questions. And I've linked all the system review questions based on their system in the video description. So in this case, your cardio system review questions would be, do you ever feel short of breath? Do you ever feel your own heartbeat racing? Do you ever notice any ankle swelling? Have you noticed any leg pain on walking? And have you ever felt dizzy or lost consciousness? Something I always add in the system review section is to ask for constitutional symptoms. These are symptoms that can affect any body system and they're very easily forgotten. And these include, have you had any fever, any recent weight loss, any tiredness, and any loss of appetite? So now onto step seven, which is the patient's perspective and picking up on cues. So even though I've put this as a separate section, a really good history is where this particular part is dynamic and it involves three parts. What are the patient's ideas, concerns, expectations, so your ice. So you'd say, do you have any ideas what might be causing all of this? Is there anything in particular you're worried about? And what are you most hoping for from the doctors today? I think the best time to address the patient's perspective is really defined by the cues that you get from your patient. If your patient right at the start mentions their dad having a heart attack when they were young, that's when you do your ice. You don't wait for doing your screening, doing your systems review. So now onto step eight, which is a background history. And this involves the background medical history, so your past medical history, drug history, family history, and social history. And you really want to signpost to your examiner that you're moving onto this section now. I like to ask some background questions now. Are you normally fit and well? Do you suffer from any medical problems? Do you take any regular medication? Do you have any allergies? Any medical problems that run in the family? And then finally, your social history. Who's at home with you? Are you currently working? and then smoking, alcohol, and recreational drug use. And then you thank the patient, and that's the end of the history. That's a run through of how to take a medical history. Just to summarize, there are eight parts to it. Step one, initiate the session and build rapport. Step two, screening for symptoms. Step three, gathering the information. So that's open question, listening, and then more closed focus questioning like Socrates. Step four is your summarize. Step five are risk factor focus questions. Step six is your systems review and constitutional symptoms. Step seven is your patient's perspective and your ICE. And finally, step eight is your background medical history. So now we've done that, let's have a look at how we would present our history. No one ever really teaches us how to present a history, but a fairly generic format is to start with the patient's name, their age and their occupation. Then you start with your main presenting complaint with all the relevant information from your open and closed questioning. Then any other symptoms that you've got from your screening. Then the patient's perspective, so the ICE. Then any relevant negative findings, which you would have got from your risk factor focus questions where you try to narrow down your differential. And then finally finish with your top differential. So for example, in this particular case of a chest pain history, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Jones, who is a 64 year old gentleman who's a retired teacher. He presents with a two day history of sharp central chest pain, six out of 10, which is pleuritic in nature and seems to get worse when he's lying down and is relieved on sitting forward. Also of note is a one week history of constitutional symptoms, including a high fever and fatigue. He seems to be most worried that this could be a heart attack as his dad had heart problems when he was very young. My relevant negative findings are reassuringly, there's no vascular risk factors. For example, he's not a smoker and he's not diabetic. There's no VTE risk factors and there's no history of syncope. My top differential here would be acute pericarditis. Other differentials of this chest pain would include cardiac causes such as acute coronary syndrome, respiratory causes such as pulmonary embolus, abdominal causes such as gastroenteritis, and finally musculoskeletal causes such as 
musculoskeletal chest pain. And that's just one way to try and present your history in a clear, concise manner. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. That was just an overview of how to take a medical history. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm in the process of putting all my medical school notes onto my website and that should be up in the next few weeks. But for now, thanks for watching guys. Have a good night and I'll see you in the next video.